Hello, my uh, name is Marian Iagul, and uh, I'm uh, one of the persons involved in the cloud lighting project. I'm working for the Institute E Austria from Romania, Timisoara. And uh, I will try to introduce you to the Cloud Lighting Gateway service, uh, particularly the service definition API, and I also provide you a different view on the architecture from the, uh, from the point of view of the, of the gateway service. Uh, so as I previously mentioned, my aim is to provide a different view to the architecture, but I want also to show you the main functionalities of the gateway service, gateway service being the component that's accessed or used by the cloud service providers or the, the users. Uh, okay, and uh, I'll show you some example, one example of uh, how, what a service definition uh, language instance will be. So how it could uh, look like. Uh, what is our um, perspective to the architecture? This is a simplified view of the gateway service. So basically, uh, we we are creating an orchestration uh, service that will interact with the self-organizing system, and I'll show in one slide how we are going to achieve, how do we plan to achieve this. And part of this orchestration engine, um, we are aggregating some existing solutions, so basically we are not reinventing the wheel, but uh, we are using uh, pre-existing software like Apache Brooklyn I'm, that I'm going to discuss in a few slides. And uh, we are creating some new components like the Blueprint Decomposition Engine that is going to be the main component interacting with the self-organizing cloud. Uh, besides this, we are creating some components that should provide uh, the ability to register new applications, new services to, to the cloud lighting backed cloud. Uh, how does, how does it look like from the, from the perspective of the user? So basically we have uh, two types, from our perspective, two types of users. One is the cloud service provider who offers resources to the beneficiaries, to the customers. And then we have the customers. We have an operator acting on behalf of them. Uh, these two actors are uh, involved with interacting with the gateway service. So basically the cloud service provider is, might offer hardware, servers, and so on that are managed by the self-organizing cloud. And then we have, the, we have the operators that might deploy components, on, might deploy applications on top of uh, this self-organizing cloud. So uh, basically the operators deploy registered applications or they, uh, they can register their own applications to the cloud. Uh, as part of the gateway service, uh, we offer several components. One is the uh, console or the user interface that the uh, cloud service providers use and also the users. And uh, the most important component that is directly accessible is the Brooklyn component that is used for uh, orchestrating all the components, all the basically it's bringing the applications to life. So it speaks with the underlying self-organizing cloud to deploy the applications, tie them together and offer a real solution that can be used by the, by the user. Uh, then we have our uh, own developed component that will interact with the self-organizing cloud. So basically we'll trigger the self-organization, uh, acquire the resources from the self-organizing cloud and pass them to Brooklyn for later orchestration and deployment and so on. So this will be another perspective to the architecture John presented it, but from the, from the view of the uh, gateway service. So gateway service being the component accessed directly by the user. Uh, okay, now I'm going to speak about uh, like the main components of the gateway service. Uh, the most, uh, uh, before that, uh, so a few characteristics of the gateway service. So as I already mentioned, it represents the interface, the gateway between the user and the self-organizing cloud. So the user sees only the gateway service, not the self-organizing cloud. So this is the main characteristic of the gateway service. Uh, Okay, and uh, as I said, it abstracts the inner working of a self-organized system. So the operator and will not see the details of the underlying system. So he will, won't be capable to directly see co internal concepts like VRAC, cells, and so on. So that's typical for a user. As, as a user, I do not want to know the details of how the cloud works behind the scenes, how it auto-organizes, what happens behind the scenes. So we want to hide this from the, from the operator. Uh, and also we introduce a service definition language that I'm going to present and that's the main purpose of this presentation. Uh, that it's uh, basically we took an uh, already accepted language and modified it to support 
our concept. So this is this is this is what we aim for. Uh, regarding the interfacing between the the, in, uh, the interaction between the the gateway and the operator, so basically we also provide the capability for the cloud service provider to register new pl blueprints. So the operator is not the on, not the only beneficiary. So the cloud service providers can register new applications, modify existing applications. Uh, we plan to make uh, the whole system like dynamic and extendable. Uh, okay, John already tackled the discussion regarding what's an application. Uh, okay, so the front-facing uh, component of the gateway service, it's, uh, like, let's say, the most simple one. It's the console or the uh, gateway UI. That's basically a web-based interface that it's used by the operators and the cloud service providers for uh, triggering uh, application deployments so basically acquiring uh, an application or asking the system to find resources for deploying on one application. Uh, we also have the ability to register new services. So for example, if a user wants a user, user representing the operator, if the operator wants to register a new application or a new service, he can use uh, this, let's say, uh, accessible way of doing it. Uh, we are also providing uh, APIs that can be used to trigger from other applications all these operations. But, uh, uh, I think I'm not going to cover them now. Uh, and uh, <coughs> one more thing, uh, this console, it's built again as another component on, on top of uh, uh, Brooklyn. So we plan to use as much as possible of their capabilities. Uh, okay. And again, we try to hide the, hide the complex complexity behind uh, the self-organizing system. Uh, another core concept of the gateway service is the, are the service catalogs. So we have several types of catalogs, service catalogs and uh, blueprint catalogs uh, that are specialized for holding, uh, it's obvious, services, def service definitions and uh, blueprint definitions. Uh, besides offering a view to the, to the operator regarding the available services, uh, these catalogs are used by the decomposition engine for triggering self-organizations, for finding uh, resources in the self-organizing system. Uh, they are used for the console component for presenting to the user. And uh, uh, from our perspective, like the perspective of Gateway Service, the main user is uh, Apache Brooklyn that based on these catalogs triggers the deployment and orchestration of the, of the services. Okay, uh, and uh, as I said, uh, one of the new brand new uh, components introduced is the service decomposition engine uh, that uh, uh, transforms basically the user requirements, the abstract user requirements to concrete uh, services, obviously with the help of the self-organizing system and uh, we'll see in a few steps how. Um, basically it allows us to transform abstract definitions to concrete ones. For example, we might have a user that uh, asks Let's say our ex my examples are built around a ray tracing application. So we might have a user that wants to run a ray tracing application, but uh, he doesn't name a concrete one. So basically, he names the requirements of that application and expects the system to find to find the matching implementation of the ray tracing uh, of the ray tracing system. So basically, the cloud lighting uh, cloud might choose and say, okay, I'm going to use a GPU implementation for uh, ray tracing or maybe I'm going to use a, a CPU implementation for ray tracing. And this is the job, the job of the self-organizing system together with the service decomposition engine to create, to provide an alternative to the user. So transform the abstract specification to a concrete one. And we'll see, in, I have uh, one example prepared for this. So uh, we can summarize that uh, the decomposition engine is the facilitator for achieving some of the main aspirations of cloud lighting. So it might like sit between the user and the service system and allow us to choose the best implementation for a, for a service or overall for the application and achieve our main goals, for example, energy efficiency or performance. Uh, as I said uh, previously, we are building on top of uh, Apache Brooklyn. Apache Brooklyn, uh, it's a project that's incubated uh, since, I don't know, two or three years by the Apache Foundation. And uh, we built on top, we plan to build on top of it to, ex 
to add uh, new concepts like our meta services that are going to introduce or abstract services that are going to be introduced shortly. Um, uh, we also have, uh, have uh, prepared some changes for it regarding the interaction with the composition engine. Okay, and uh, we reuse its uh, blueprint, uh, blueprint language, basically it's a domain specific language for expressing like complex applications and orchestrating applications. Uh, this language serves as the backbone of our uh, service definition language and we'll see shortly an example. I want to show you how a blueprint looks like. Uh, so this will be a definition of a blueprint for a ray tracing application. Uh, normally this blueprint will be generated automatically by the user inter, well, like the console. So the user will not be, the operator will not be required to write this kind of uh, YAM, basically this is a YAML uh, document, so no one is expecting the user to write by hand these documents, they should be automatically generated. But uh, if, you look, uh, if you look at this example, we see that uh, we introduce a new concept, that's the, uh, in this example we have, we require a new service that's called Ray Tracing Compute Service. Uh, but this, uh, this service doesn't have an exact implementation, so Brooklyn is not capable of deploying it. So if we give this document to the Apache Brooklyn system, we'll complain that he doesn't have any kind of definition for this component. And behind the scenes, like uh, the service decomposition engine replaces this definition, interacts with the self-organizing self -organizing cloud, finds out if we have resources, picks the best resources, and um, provides a definition for this service that fits that resources. So basically we hide the whole self-organizing power behind this. So the user asks for a generic component. We, it might provide other options. For example, in this example, it, uh, in, uh, in uh, this service example, we ask for a minimum performance of 100 gigaflops. This is made up. And uh, we also require that should be the pl uh, placement policies should be same uh, broadcast domain. And we also might send, but this is optional and it's subject to change. We may also send hints to Cloud Lighting regarding hardware preferences. So for example, you might prefer to use GPUs for implanting the service or FPGA or a normal CPU. Uh, okay, so this is still under consideration. We should allow the user to choose or not. It's open for discussions. And at each level, we provide uh, options for um, specifying requirements. So the user might be able to send requirements to self-organizing cloud at the service level or uh, the blueprint level, and there is one more option to send the requirements on deployment time, so when it asks for uh, the deployment of, uh, or starting a blueprint. Uh, the rest of the, uh, it's not in this slide, but uh, we also allow the user to use normal definitions of, um, of services. For example, this could be a, a definition that Brooklyn is, um, aware of, so it might automatically, so it might already have a definition for it, start it automatically, and provide information that was sent or generated by this component. So for example, in case uh, Cloud Lighting decides to create, a, to create a CPU cluster for satisfying this, for deploying an application, let's say an MPI application, we might get uh, endpoint information using various properties at this level in order to tie, tie everything together. Uh, so this will be one example of a, of a blueprint. And, uh, okay, uh, what, are the, what are our plans? So regarding the implementation schedule, uh, well, the requirements have to be identified by end. So we, it's basically finished, most of it. We identified the requirements of the language. And uh, last month, the activity of developing the gateway service started. So. Uh, Theoretically, we have uh, we ha we are going to release some uh, final versions in February next year, but we plan to have some intermediary releases. Also, if uh, if uh, if uh, successful with the mod changes to the Apache Brooklyn, we plan to push them upstream, so they are us useful for the for the Brooklyn project, the Apache, Apache Foundation.